Nothing quite like a game day in Oklahoma City. Everybody in OKC is all in for their thunder and they'll have their backs tonight as they try to keep this uh, strange trend going in the Western Conference Finals through five games. The Spurs are plus 80 at home, minus 22 in OKC, and that's where the Western Conference Finals shift for Saturday's game six. And the average margin of victory in this series so far is over 20. Is, I don't know if it's possible to have a seven game series that's not a good series, but that's sort of where we're headed right now because there's been zero drama at the ends of these games. What accounts for this? It's easy. I just don't know how to word it, but here's what it is. The team that shoots the best wins every game. Now, does that mean you're good offensively, Grant? Does it mean you have to be great defensively to keep the other guy down? Or does that mean, in this case, you only shoot well at home? That could be a factor also. <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever seen anything like that? I think they should switch hotels. Whatever hotels they were staying <laughs> in the first, uh, first few games, they should switch. But, yeah, I mean, it, it is. I mean, it's, a, it's shocking to see a, a series without a close game. And really, you know, the home team, not just winning, but winning, it, it, you know, in the style that they have. Uh, thus far, but I, one little thing that happened between Game Four and Game Five that uh, I think is is interesting is you know it, it may not be a big thing uh, in terms of statistics, but Matt Bonner starting mm -hmm. in Game Five uh, when San Antonio went back home, uh, you know he didn't score, but you have to respect what he does. And now Abaka can't roam around out there defensively, uh, and you know he can guard uh, splitter, but also help out and. And, and, and so I think that that might be an interesting, you know, matchup. But I think I think first of all, it's just hard to play in those places. I mean, yeah. OKC, you run up and down the court with those guys. Very athletic. They feed off the crowd. The same thing in San Antonio. And you know, this is why you fight hard during the regular season to get home court advantage and, and home court home court is, is but, served. But you know, what was yeah. interesting. You talk about you run up and down with Oklahoma City. San Antonio did run up and down with them. Yeah. And they actually picked up their tempo, their pace from the previous games where they had lost and were getting shots up much more quickly. Normally we see San Antonio come down, reverse the ball a couple times. They came down, took a number of shots that still had 14, 15, 16 seconds left on the shot clock. So kind of unusual, this old team that's over the hill came right back at the youngsters. Both teams, in fact, have made lineup changes over the course of the series. First, Abaka's return coupled with Reggie Jackson's uh, placement in the starting lineup for Oklahoma City. Suddenly they became a more offensive-minded team in game three. They win two in a row. Greg Popovich comes back by starting Matt Bonner for the first time all season long and then brought in Boris Diaw to start in the second half. What, if anything, is the counter move for Scott Brooks now in game six? Scott Brooks has to get his team attacking the rim. That's what they do best. I'm still waiting for the night when Kevin Durant just busts out and has one of his huge games, which has not happened yet. When you get a guy who scores the way he does, you know it's going to happen eventually. But San Antonio is so astute at knowing what they want to do defensively against him that they're trying to take him out of his spots, trying to make him feel the challenge on every one of his shots. Nothing easy for him. And as a result, you have to have the Durant-Westbrook combination score well over 60 points combined, I think, to win. No, I agree. I mean, I think, you know, Oklahoma City relies so heavily on those two. And they, they do, you know, they're volume shooters. They're going to, every possession is really geared towards those guys scoring. So they have to play big. Uh, obviously, if a third player for Oklahoma City steps up uh, and they're at home, you know, it's a good chance they're going to win the game. But I don't know. I, I just feel it's easy to run at home. You know, it's easy. I think of the Utah Jazz back in, in the 90s. Yep. Uh, Stockton and Malone and those teams. And, you know, in, in, in Utah, when you played those guys, I mean, it was hard. They were running, and, 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 but then on the road, they played a little bit different. And so, I don't know, I, I feel like if San Antonio would control the tempo a little bit more and not make it a track meet uh, at OKC in game six, they may have a chance uh, to win that game and, and close out the series. And so I'm not questioning Greg Popovich because he's obviously the greatest coach out there right now in the NBA. But I just, you know, the OKC is so athletic. They're young. They get up and down the court as well as anybody in that building. And to try to run with them, I, I think that's a recipe for disaster. No, you never know. He may switch it up. You don't know what Greg Popovich may have up his sleeve.